arrived at that cell position posted on the group. So as usual, I start from my daily time frame. Then I get a one hour time frame and take entries. So from my daily time frame, I will change to the line chart so that we'll see what we have there. Quickly, I can, looking at the line chart here, you can spot this zone. This is the first zone I spotted right here. I also saw this zone. Then this zone right here that have been tested once. Yeah, that's that's what I have. That's what I saw on my daily time frame. Okay, you can also see this zone here. Yeah, this this is another zone. Or price tested this place, this place right here. Price have tested this zone previously. So um, let's let me switch to the candlestick. So we can see how price reacted to the zones. So quickly, you see price broke this recent zone. So we'll be expecting a retest of this zone so that we can continue this downward movement. So I'm looking at price action in this zone to take sales into this other zone. But let's see what we have on the four hours time frame. Let me switch to the line chart. Yeah, on the Yeah, um, on the four hours time frame, I saw this trend line. Then I, I also had this trend line previously, which was broken and retested. That was started, that was how this downtrend started. So we can see how price reacted to this trend line. Price has been respecting this trend line until it broke out and retested. Then it started a downward movement. So you can also see that price broke this zone right here, this zone here. So if I see a retest of this zone, then we can confirm sales to the downside. So to take, to have more information on this retracement, I, I will use my FIB to take from, this, this is my FIB on actually right here. And we can see that the 50% level of this FIB is exactly in this same zone. So I'm gonna mark this 50% Fibonacci level with a horizontal line. Yeah, then I'll delete the fee. So this horizontal line right here, let me change it to blue so it can be visible. Green. Yeah, the 50% FIB level is exactly at this zone. So when we see price retrace up to this level, then we can take comfortable sales to the downside. So in this area, I'll be looking at price action in this area to from this zone into this 
into this zone. So when price gets to this place, I will switch to my one hour time frame and take entries. Also in my one hour time frame, I saw this trend line too. So price tested this trend line the first time at this point, came back, tested this trend line here and tested it the third time. So you can agree with me that if price comes back to this trend line, it can likely reject and continue downward movement. So taking sales from this area would be very, very nice. And taking sales here, is a very nice risk to reward ratio. So I'm gonna take sales from this zone. I'm gonna take sales up to this zone. Price can still break this zone, but when it gets there, we'll see how price is gonna react. So we're having our stop loss directly above this zone. So that's, that's what I have on my GPB AUD. I'll be taking sales from the 1.81522 level into this zone right here. So I don't, I don't know if anyone has any question on this pair before I, I switch to the next pair I have. Thank you. So if, if you have questions, I don't know, you can type on the chat box or you can indicate it so that the host can unmute you. Or do I continue? Let us use the chat box for now. If anybody has questions, don't use the chat box. Thank you. Okay, I've seen the first question. What's the planned entry time frame? Um, I took entries from the one hour, as we saw. I took entries from this one hour because I expect price to react to this trend line that has been tested three times already. So I expect price to react when it gets to this trend line. So I'm taking my entry from the one hour time frame. Um, I see another question. I thought Marcel should reduce time frames according to our capital. Um, I don't know what that question means. I don't know. I don't understand it. Can we place a sell limit at 50? Um, it depends on the kind of trader you are. If you are an aggressive trader, you can have a sell limit there. But if you don't fancy aggressive entries, then you monitor price action here. What I mean by monitoring price action at this zone is when price gets here, you look to see if price will close above this trend line or below. That's what I mean by monitoring price action there. If price closes below it, then you can then wait for price to reject this zone. Let me show you what I mean. If if you don't fancy an aggressive entry, you can you can wait for price to get to this zone, this trend line, reject it, maybe retest, and then we we'll continue down movement. Price can as well retest this trend line. I delete this.
Okay, price can as well retest this trend line and then we'll see the downward movement or you can see price retest the zone and come back. So whichever happens, you just look at price action in this area and take it and take your trade. Let me let me check the next question. Please, if I didn't answer your question, well, you can also indicate. Take it back to weekly time frame. Mm, okay, let's let's see what the weekly time frame says. Someone says we should look at the weekly time frame. Yeah, from the weekly perspective, you can see that the market is still in a downtrend. So taking sales, we are still safe. And we can see clearly from a weekly perspective, you can see this, you can see a bullish engulfing candlestick. Sorry, a bearish engulfing candlestick here from a weekly perspective. So if we take sales, that we are not wrong. Yeah, let me see the next questions. Which is more important, a retest of the trend line or a retest of the resistance? Well, which whichever one you see. That's what I, I always advise to treat what you see and not treat what you expect. Whatever you see, you treat. If you see price retest the trend line, you take your sales. If you see price retest the zone, you take your sales. So when price gets to the trend line and closes below it, you can take your sales there. The most important thing is having your stop loss above the zone. When, when you have your stop loss here, then you are safe. Let me look at the next question. Please, if I didn't answer your question well, you can also indicate <clears throat> is analyzing a chart using time frame according to your capital is when you want to execute a trade. It's just showing you his okay. This person just answered the previous question. I don't still know how to spot zones, but I can spot resistance and support. Um, when we say zones, I think what we mean is resistance and support zones. So they're, they're just the same thing. You are saying the same thing. Francis, why you are saying the same thing? When you mean by price action at that zone, do you mean reversal patterns? Um, there are a lot of things to look out for. When you say you're observing price action from a specified zone. You could be looking at candlestick formations around that area. Like when price gets to this place, you can look at candlestick formations to see if the market can give you a bearish structure. Or when price gets to this trend line, you can be considering if price closed above or below it. When price closes below it, like, okay, let's look at what happened here. Price intersected this trend line and closed directly below it. So when I say observe price action around that area, that could mean it. Um, also some people that have talked about candlestick formation, I've talked about closing above or below it, because that's the two price action I know. That's, that's the two that I know for now. Okay, the next question. The trend line is on the resistance zone as well. Yes. Can we wait for bearish engulfing candlestick at the resistance level? You cannot, you cannot specify for the markets what to give to you. You will just take whatever the markets give, gives to you. So you can't be expecting a bearish engulfing candlestick here. But you can be, there are so many um, 
reversal candlestick patterns that you should be looking out for. You can be looking out for an inverted hammer. Um, well, I can't list them, but I know there are many reversal, candlestick reversal patterns. So you can't be looking at only bearish engulfing pattern. Any candlestick reversal pattern you spot around this area, you can take yourselves. Which is more important? Okay, I've answered this question before. Let's please let's view this pair from the 15 minutes time frame as possible. Please, um, for me, I take entries from the one hour. Whatever I see below the one hour time frame, I don't look at 15 minutes. One, I don't look at 15 minutes time frame and below. The reason is because I consider them too noisy. Like if you switch to the 15 minutes time frame, you could see a lot of things. You could see a lot of price. Like look at the 15 minutes time frame. Let's look at what it looks like. Um, so personally, I don't I don't look at it. Many people take entries from 15 minutes, but I take my entries from one of our lowest. <laughs> the next question. On daily time frame, there is information that that is meant to be control limits is not accepted. But well, let me let me look at what this person says. It says from a daily time frame. Solomon says from a daily time frame, you can see an information. Uh, I'm trying to spot the information. Mm, I I can't see any. Um, Solomon, if you can. And see an information. Maybe you can draw it on my screen. You can just draw it on my screen. Let me let me look at it. Um okay. cap starts is I didn't get the parts. Yeah, you see it. which of the test is more important. My network went off. Okay, I said. <coughs> Um, the retest could be on the on this trend line. Um, is my network still going? What I said is. Solomon, yeah, trying to show me the information. Please go ahead. Let me switch to the daily time frame. Uh, Solomon, is this what you mean? Okay, okay, okay. So, um, what I understand, yeah, Solomon, I, I understand. Please uh, um, delete. like this you should be expecting a retest of this neckline to continue down um, 
um movement. Just like this, this is what I mean. So Solomon, you're not wrong at all. From seeing an M. Be expecting a neckline action. We are expecting. Ozema, I think you might need to relocate from wherever you are. Your network is cracking. Um, then of this neckline, then a continuation of the downward movement. Um, Solomon showed us this M formation that is so from the daily perspective. And after you see an M formation, you should be expecting a retest. You should be expecting, you be expecting a retest of the neckline and a continuation, which is exactly what you are saying. You are expecting a little movement to the upside, then a continuation to the down to this zone. So Solomon, we are we are saying the same thing. We are saying the same thing, Solomon. So um if anyone has any other question you can ask so we we'll know if we'll move over to the next pair as A U D J P Y. If you have any further question on this pair you can ask on the chat box. I think you should move on to the next page. So we won't have to waste so much time. Every other question can be asked on the chat box. Um, um, Solomon, if you have um, another, if you have a chat, you can send it on the WhatsApp platform where you are, where you're seeing your own, um, okay. the structure you're actually seeing, you can send it on the WhatsApp platform. Okay, okay. So yeah. um, let's move over on this page. Um, in conclusion, on this pair, I'm looking to take cells on this level. This is what I'm expecting from this pair. Yeah, um, let's let's look at what this is exactly the the chat. Let me remove it together. Out from the day, have there on the day. Please can. Um, Uzama, for the benefit of someone that said he's still having issue drawing his support and resistance zone, you can do you can use this pair to show us the way you spotted your zone so he can he or she, I don't know who the person is, can get a little insight on how we use how we normally identify our support and resistance zone. Okay, okay. My drawings. Spare GP. That was where we spot. Spots. Change your charts. The reason is line charts will give you a what a quick look you you, you identify the, this point all the um, marking out intercept that's that's 
think that Christ comes to this. The price. Hi, Uzoma, your network is so, so bad. Hey, is Uzoma, in the, is he on the call? Just a minute, let me check. Okay, yeah, he just got back in. Okay. Okay, Uzoma. Can you try again? If you are actually using your phone, your mobile, your hotspot to to connect to your laptop, maybe you should disconnect. No, I don't. I don't. I have a router. I use a router. Oh, okay. Because the network is actually is I really, use, really I use a router. Oh, okay. I'm using a router. I'm not using a phone. All right. Um, so what I was saying, um, let me delete this just joins. Um, what I was saying before, we reject it and move downwards, and we saw price again come back to that same level, and it was rejected. It came back again, it was rejected, came back, was rejected, and now. It is rejected. Um, so the basic rule for drawing a zone is you will find a level that price has, re um, has rejected as many times as possible. Um, by rejecting, I don't mean um, if price hits it, it will be reject. What I mean is um react not reject the word is react sometimes you can see price come to a zone break through it and retest that's what i mean by react um i was using the word retest is wrong the the correct word is react so you see price react at this level as many times as possible so when you see price react like this that's how you spot a zone. So, so we have a zone here. We have this zone here. We can also see, can also see this, this level, right? Reacted here, reacted here, reacted here. So we can take, we can call a zone into this level. We can call a zone here. Um. Okay, you can also see price at this level. You can see here, all these points are points where price came and reacted so we can as well call another zone into this level we can call another zone into this level that was how we arrived at all the zones we are looking at right now and i think i also called this a zone because price already I called this a zone too, because price, although price have tested it once, in future, when price gets to this zone again, it will react. So um, if price tests a particular level once, you, you still mark it out. Um, so um, I think I've answered that question. I've answered that question. If you, if you have further confusions on joining a zone, you can still ask the question on the chat box now. Do I even get to the chat box?
Uzuma, I'd like to know from your perspective, how many times should price react to a particular zone before you could consider it a zone? Um, basically, if price reacts more than once, that's two times. The moment price reacts in a zone once, once here, and reacts again twice, then that zone is strong. Um, there is also a rule that says um, the more price comes back to its particular zone and reacts, the stronger that zone. Take for example, take for example, this zone we spotted here, this particular zone. You can, if we take account, you can see. Um, okay, before then, let me extend this because. Yeah, if you take account, you can see price react here. This is the first place, one. It reacted here again, two. It came back here, broke and retested. So it reacted at this point, three. Reacted here, four. This place, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and yeah, it have reacted in history eight times. So then the more price reacts to a particular zone, the stronger that zone. So we can we can say with confidence that this particular zone is a very strong one. So if we see price come back to this zone, we are going to expect a reaction. We're going to expect a reaction. And most probably to the downside because we we have other reasons, so um, I think I answered that question. I answered that question. Mm, yeah, if price reacts for longer period, that makes the zone stronger. Um, so if if we don't have any more questions, let's talk about other currency pairs. Okay. okay, let's let's continue. <clears throat> this is um AUD JPY. And as usual, we'll be, be looking at what we have from the daily time frame. Okay, um on the on the daily time frame, first of all, you switch switch to the line chart that's what i do before i i make any drawings i switch to my line charts okay from from a daily perspective first of all I identified a zone here, I identified a zone here, given the fact that price reacted here at this point, price reacted again at this point, reacted here, it reacted here. Uh, let, me, let me mark it out, price reacted at this point. Yeah, so, we mark that this as our first zone. And also, it, I took another zone here. Um, I took another zone here. Yeah, this, this, this is also another zone, this place. Because we can see price react at this point in history. <clears throat> um, also from the, from the daily perspective, I spotted this downtrend because price has respected this trend line twice. And the moment you see price test a particular 
trend line twice. You should expect price to react when it comes back to that same trend line. And um, basically by definition, trend line is, it means um, support and resistance, but um, and how do I put it? How do I put it? Um, Okay, I don't know. Let me leave it. Um, I spotted this trend line. Spotted this. So um, I'm gonna switch to candlestick. So you see how price reacted to this. You can see price. Um, also this is another zone. You can see price reacting to these zones and and this price. And these trend lines too. Um, so from a daily perspective, I'm expecting a downward movement from this trend line, at least to this zone. At least to this zone. You can see price reacts to this. When it gets to this zone, we'll see what happens. Because price may react by rejecting this zone. So we should be taking our profits at this zone. Um, but let's 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 go to the smaller time frames and see what we have there. <clears throat> and this is this is the four hours time frame. Okay, this is the four hours time frame. Let me switch to the line chart. Um, okay. From this line chart, you can I identified this zone here, this zone right here. Because I saw price test this zone and reject it. It tested it again and rejected it, tested it for the third time. And it price has currently come back to this same zone. Initially, price broke out, and we we should have been expecting a retest and a continuation. But currently, we are seeing price coming back into the zone. So this could likely be called a false breakout. I can call that a false breakout. So let's switch to the candlestick. So um, what I'm seeing here, price is still trading in the zone. So until price moves out from this zone, we, we cannot see for sure the direction of the market. Even though from a four hours and daily time frame perspective, we're expecting a downward movement because of this trend line, but we can only get confirmations only when price leaves this zone. So since we are looking at taking sales, we should be looking at price to break out of this zone, retest the zone, and then we can take ourselves into this zone or possibly into, you can see this too, we could see something like this. Yeah, so we can have our first take profit at this first zone and second take profit at this other zone. So um but let me let me zoom into the let me zoom into the one hour time frame so that we can have a clearer view and take our entries from there. So from a one hour perspective let me switch to line charts okay um I saw So this trend line, price tested this trend line three times. And then at the fourth attempt, price broke out of this trend line and retested it. Yeah, we could see, let me change to candlestick. Price has been respecting this trend line 
opt until it got into the zone and broke out. And it's still trending, it's still trading inside this zone. So um, what I'm saying is I'll be looking at price to leave this zone and retest. So specifically, what I should be expecting is I should be expecting price to leave. Yeah, price could actually react at this level because we have we have a little support here. We have a little support here. So um if markets opens now, we should be looking at price to come down into this zone. Then when price comes back comes out of this zone, then we've confirmed that price have left this zone. So we should be looking for a retest of this zone and then we can take sales from this level. No, this, this, this buys. You can take sales when price retests this zone with your stop loss directly above the previous high. So this, this is what I'm expecting on this page. Also, if if we see price come into this zone and go up, then by that we must have completed a structure. I'm seeing I'm seeing an I'm seeing a double, yeah, no, a head and shoulder pattern. That is yeah. This is what I'm seeing. So if price should actually break out of this zone and retest, then we should be comfortable taking sales here because we must, we, by taking sales here, we are completing the head and shoulder pattern that is forming right here. Um, I think that's that's all for this pair. If if you have questions, you can you can start dropping them in the chat box. Okay, let me see the first question. Trend line diagonals. Yes, um, I was actually looking for this definition. Trend line by definition, it means diagonal support and resistance. It's it's it um it does the same work at as this horizontal levels. It, it um it does the same work, but in a diagonal way. Um so some people trade with only trend line. Why some people trade with um support um horizontal support and resistance? But um you you can get the best results if you combine the both. For me, I get the best results when I combine both horizontal and diagonal support and resistance. Okay. I would like to ask again, considering the US elections. Will you be taking any US pairs in the markets? Um, I don't know anything about fundamental trading, and so, so I don't I don't trade fundamentals, but I know fundamentals. They they have a lot to do in the market, so that's why I'm carefully avoiding the US pairs. That's why I'm, I'm just avoiding it, but I can't trade fundamentals. Um, please, if you have more questions, you can drop them. Otherwise, we'll move to the next pair. That is the AUD CAD. Okay, okay. Let's let's move to the A. So um, this this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at taking cells. Yeah. I'm looking at taking sales on this. Okay. It's having, um, I'm gonna have my first take profit here. And then I'm having my second take profit here. So this, this is a very nice tricks to reward ratio right there. Um, so let me, let me move quickly to the next pair. Is the AUD CAD.
so um from a let me let me remove the drawings from a daily perspective this is the first thing i saw on this pair i saw price trading and respecting this trend line right here. Price has, has been respecting this trend line until it broke out. So currently we can see that price just broke out of this trend line, this downward. Yeah, and also I can see a zoom here. I can see another one that is yet to be tested. This one has been tested only once. I can see a zoom here. This zone has been tested three times in history. This zone has been tested here has been tested here, has been tested here. So we can actually expect a reaction when price comes back here. So let's let's switch to the candlestick and see what we have here. Yeah, we can see price reacting to these zones well. Yeah, we can see price reacting to these zones well. So I'm actually expecting a retest of this zone that it just broke out from then a continuation into this zone. Even though we could still see price retest, we could see price come back to retest this trend line. And then continue the upward movement but let's see let's see what we have on four hours time frame that will give us a clearer view of whether price is likely to test the zone or the trend line so um let me switch to the four hours time frame and the line chart too so um on my on the four hours time frame i see this and so i drew a trend line here so price is price is likely to come back to test this trend line or it could test this resistance that it just broke out from. So whichever one happens, we take whatever the market gives us. So at market open, if we see price continue this downward movement into this zone, then um, I'll be, I won't be making an aggressive entry on this pair because um, price could either retest the zone or the trend line. So I will just be watching to see. So when price gets to this place, okay, when price gets to this, when price gets to this zone that it just broke out from, we observe candlestick formation from a one hour perspective, and then we we'll, decide to take buys from this zone into this zone. Um, I, th I think that's, that's all I have to say on this pair. So in summary, I'm looking at taking a long position on AUD, CAD from this zone. Yeah.
this is what I'm looking at on this pair. So if if you have any questions, you can drop them on the chat box. Let me quickly look at them by going to the next pair. Um, if you can walk around 10.30 for rounding up cost of the recording. Okay, okay, okay. So, so let, me, let me look at the next pair. That's good. Um, Madam Peace has already dropped her own idea on good, and I think I share that same idea, because that's the only thing I see good is showing. So from a daily perspective, you can quickly identify this, this zone right here. You identify this zone from a daily perspective. And you can see that price just broke out of the zone. So we are just expecting a retest of this zone and a continuation to the upside. That's basically what we're expecting to see from gold. So at market open, if, if we see gold come back to this level, this zone, then we should be taking buys, no doubt. We should be taking buys on gold when it comes back to this level. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm I'm looking at in from gold. Um, then we can look at the last pair if there are no questions. That's the NZD USD. Yeah, this is the last pair, NZD USD. And quickly from the daily perspective, I spotted this zone right here. Spotted this zone that have been tested. This zone has been tested once and twice. So I'm expecting price to react to this zone and move down. Specifically, let me delete this. Specifically, um, because I saw this trend, I was I was riding this trend until price broke out. Yeah, I was I was on this trend before price broke out. So um, I should be expecting. Is also a zone here. This is also a zone. So I should be expecting price to test this zone and move up. Even though price is likely to test this trend line and break. So whatever happens, um already on friday i took i took sales on this pair on friday that's the only open trade i was having so this 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 is what i have on on nzd usd already um I took my sales from this level. I made an aggressive entry and I had my stop loss here. And I'm taking my profits at the trend line. I don't want to take chances because price is likely to react. When I posted this chart on the group, Madam Peace advised against the sales. And I quite agree with her. Because it's not always advice, it's not advisable at all to trade against any trend. Because currently we are seeing an uptrend. So 
we should wait for a retracement and take buys. We shouldn't be taking sales on this pair. So um, I'll leave that to you. You do, you trade whatever you see, but already I made an aggressive entry at this level and I have my stop loss already at entry. So I already have the trade risk free. So if you have any questions on any of the five pairs I just discussed, you can drop your questions. Yeah, um, I see the first question. What's the current candlestick fund? How do you determine the width of your zones? Um, I don't know the time frame you are referring to. I don't know the time frame, which of the time frame, serial. Other charts we have analyzed use the smaller zone, but now you are using the larger width for the pair. Why? Um, let me try and answer this question. Okay. Um, basically, how I draw my zones. I think this this the zone here. I think this is zone in question. The question is why is the zone why is the width of the zone too big? Um, if if I'm drawing my zones like this right here, I'll look at this point. This is the first point and this is the second point. So while drawing my zones, I try to connect the highest point tested, the highest point price tested. That is the first red I marked and I connect it to the lowest point. So this is what I mean. I, I connect this point, which is the highest point, the the highest level price got to in this zone, and this is the lowest level price got to. So basically, I connect and I draw my zone to touch the boot. So um, if that makes my zone wide or smaller, um, I I don't think I take that seriously. But once it touches the highest and the lowest points, I'm I'm fine with the zone. But but any anyone can do otherwise. I'm, I'm just what I said now is is how I draw is how I draw my own zones. So I think I answered that question. In your in your analysis, you always expect a pullback on any zone. Do you also give room for a breakout and retest on that same zone, knowing the fact that market can be uncertain at, at times? Yeah, yeah. And um, I think that was the reason Madam Peace advised against the sell because. By one of the rules of zone says that um, if price gets to a zone, like it just got to this zone, it's not always true that price is gonna reject. Sometimes you can see price break out of this zone and retest. Um, that's why you trade whatever you see. But the, the reason why I took these sales is just that in history, I saw price at this point, at this point, price reacted downwards. When it also got to this level again, it reacted downwards. Um, so um, I was expecting price to react downwards. That was the only reason I had to take sales, but that doesn't make it right. That's what I'm trying to say. That doesn't make it right. So whenever you see price come into a zone, you should wait to see what happens. Madam Peace always, she has always taught us that we should wait. Let me remove these drawings. Um, Madam Peace has always advised to wait for a breakout, a retest, then we take sales or break out a retest, you take buys. That's what Madam Peace has always taught us. And that's the right thing to do. So um, I shouldn't have taken sales, but I, I did that because I took the sales aggressively because I had stop loss of 10 pips. That was a small amount to risk compared to the reward. And I think I've answered that question. 
Yes, that's the zone. Okay, I've answered that question. And please, if there are more questions, you can ask. Otherwise, I will conclude the class. Okay. If if there are no more questions, then I think the class should be closed. The host, you can you can take over from here. Thank you. Um, um, thank you, Mr. Ivana. If let the round of applause to our participants number seven seven seven. Let's see that seven 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 seven. Let's go. Let's do it, let's do it. <clears throat> seven, seven, seven to see a bit ten to analyze or taking time to analyze this faster or and uh, I want to say this ten to to Madam T for making this for today. I want to say this ten to to every one of us for being on this call. Uh in the mail, family, Peter Colabi, Batty, Batin Star, that's the Somebody is using my phone. I see a phone being still out. Francis, I will be you. Tony, Samu, I will be you. As you could do. Please do not think you want to be in the first place. I feel like you are the power of the sky. I will see Johnny and Sarah. Thank you for making me to this class. And I want to wish all of us a wonderful day in the week. Uh, one last thing I would want to emphasize is patience. Be patient before you take your faith. Uh, be patient and always stay with your faith. First love. Don't ever allow your faith to take the best of you in the market. You might fail to today, but the time you're going to go against it might be brutal. So please always stay with your purpose and be patient enough to play that in you. So I want to wish everyone of us a wonderful night. After this call, I'll try to uh, confess this recording and make it available to us. So I wish us all a blessed week. Thank you. God bless you. My name is Jeremy Bellas. Have a wonderful night.